Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I'm going to show you how to create fast formulations when you're creating surfactant formulas. Now I have a fast formulations video which talks through the concept of fast formulations. That's the emulsions video. And the point with a fast formulation is that normally you would take nine months if everything went to plan to go from the concept of a product through to launch. In reality, it usually takes longer. And that's because we need to conduct preliminary stability and there's a lot of other things that can not go quite to plan along the way. The point with a fast formulation is that you can get to market in as little as three months once you've developed and tested a fast formulation base. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create two different types of surfactant formulas. One is natural and one is synthetic. I'm showing the different types because you'll have different company philosophies that might make you select one over the other. Now formulating surfactants is not an easy task. Anyone who has tried to do it in the past will know what I'm talking about. If this is one of your first videos you've seen about creating surfactant formulas, please watch one of my other surfactant videos as well because it's a big jump to come into this topic without any prior understanding of how to create surfactant formulas. So I have separate videos on how to create a basic surfactant formula and also an easy natural surfactant. And what you'll see in both of these videos is that the combination of surfactants and the method is crucial. So what I've done in this video and what I'm going to explain as we go through this video is why I've made the ingredient selections I have to make these formulas very robust. And then I'm going to show you just how robust they are at the end. But again, if you haven't had much experience with surfactants, you might not quite understand some of the terminology or why I've had to create these formulas the way I have. But please watch those other videos and then get creating in your lab and you'll soon understand why. So let's get started with the first formulation, which is a synthetic product. Now first I have my water here and to this I am adding Carbapol Aqua SF1. Now the reason I'm using this polymer, it has some extremely special performance characteristics that enable me to create a fast formulation base that will handle lipids getting added, will handle uh, pearlized effects getting added, will handle beads, will even handle acid getting added. This particular polymer is very special in what it does and that's why I'm using it in this formula. One of the first things we need to do though is get it into the formula and I'm also going to add a couple of my surfactants and then I'm going to neutralize this polymer. This will go clear when it is neutralized. One of the special characteristics about this polymer is it can undergo what we call back acid thickening. So we need to neutralize it first, bring the pH up above 6.5 to neutralize the polymer and get it to thicken the product in the first place. The special characteristic of this polymer is that we can then bring the pH back down and in fact, reducing the pH on this particular polymer once it's been neutralized will help it thicken the product even better. It will also help it suspend solids even better right down to a pH of about 3.8. So I'm just combining uh, these first materials uh, initially and then I'm going to neutralize it simply because right now it's making it easy to combine that paste surfactant into the bulk water phase. As you can see, when we adjust that pH, we not only increase the viscosity, but we now have a nice clear product. 
There's a few bubbles because we've just been mixing it, but that is a clear product. Now we can add the remaining surfactant. Uh, preservative EDTA and mix until combined. Now when you add salt in the presence of this polymer it will also go thicker. You might be able to see that in the video there as it's stirring it is going thicker. And once we've combined them I'm going to really put this formula to the test with some additions. So as mentioned, I've used this polymer because it can handle the pH going up or down, which can happen in a fast formulation when you are adding just about anything. You've seen how thick it goes and because of the anionic surfactants I'm using, I can add a small amount of lipid to this formula and it will remain stable. Let's take a look when we challenge it a little bit more. So right now it is sitting at a pH of about 6.5. I'm just going to add 2% of glycolic acid. Look how thick that is now becoming. Look at that flow. You can see that even with 2% glycolic acid, it is still a stable formula. Now don't worry that it looks a little white today, this will go clear. On the day of manufacture of your surfactant in a bigger batch, it's not a problem because you can't introduce too much air. In a lab sample, you will introduce air on the day. So if it looks a little bit like this on the day, that's fine. You can see it will go nice and clear once that air has settled out. And look how thick that is. I could even reduce the amount of polymer that I've used even in the presence of 2% glycolic acid. And just in case you didn't believe how robust this base formula is, this is with 2.5% of beads added. You can see they're perfectly stable and suspended in this one base product. And that is of course one of the principles of fast formulations. You want your base chassis, your base product to be able to handle just about anything you want to throw in that formula without having to do extensive stability tests every single time. So you make your base chassis and you can use the example I've provided here. You run extensive accelerated and real time stability testing by adding acid, lipids, beads to this base chassis and you see how it performs over time. And once you've completed that initial and extensive accelerated and real time stability on the base chassis, even under adverse conditions, you then have a fast formulation base that you can use with relative confidence into the future with as short as a three month lead time. That's a fast formulation. Now let's take a look at how we do this using natural materials. So now I'm using materials here that will help us create the fast formulation, um, which means sometimes I can't use materials that small brands can access readily. But at the same time, if you're going to be making some surfactant batches, you'd probably find that you would be able to get supplies of these materials to suit, say, a 50 kilo production run. Now what I'm doing here is I'm using a material that's plant upon SF and again where I can use materials accessible for small brands I do use them. You can also join our Facebook group uh, for small brands if you're interested in supplies of materials specifically for small brands. Um, but I'm using a plant upon SF because it combines an anionic, amphoteric and non-ionic material in it already and I'm adding a super fatting agent to improve the mildness of this combination. One of the important steps in building this base product is making sure that I combine the super fatting material with the surfactant at this very first step. Uh, and that's because I need to create what we know as micelles uh, that have the surfactants combined rather than have two different combinations of surfactants present. So it needs to be a homogeneous mixture of the surfactants in the early stage. So 
So method is really crucial when using these materials. I need to make sure that the surfactants combine and form micelles before I mix them into the water. Now I've got my water phase and I can add my surfactants that are already combined. They must be combined and homogenous first and I can add these to the water phase. Now, <clears throat> the next step is to add my xanthan gum, and I'm picking xanthan gum in this case because it's going to be a good, reliable thickener. Again, I'm making a base chassis that needs to handle just about any material I'm gonna put into this. I'm using xanthan gum because it's very reliable and it's also easy for small brands to obtain. Now, you can get really elegant forms of xanthan gum. I'm using a very basic form of xanthan gum here. So you could make your formula more elegant looking, uh, more transparent by using something like a Cosphoderm X Soft or a Keltrol CGT, but I realize some small brands can't access those. So I'm just using a very basic xanthan gum here that you would get from most of your craft or soap suppliers. Now before I add this to my surfactants, I'm just gonna bring the pH down so that my xanthan gum will thicken really easily because the pH will be below seven. Uh, these surfactants generally start with quite a high pH, so we need to bring the pH down, uh, otherwise the xanthan gum won't thicken. This basic grade of xanthan gum won't thicken if the pH is above seven. So there it is, around five. So now I can add my xanthan gum and it will start to thicken nicely. Now I have added quite a bit of xanthan gum into this formula because we are relying on that to help thicken this formula. It's also going to help us stabilize particles. And here's a sample I prepared earlier, again with some beads. Uh, you can see the final viscosity. And if I was using uh, a better grade of xanthan gum, that would be quite a clear mixture. So that's how it looks with beads added. Now I have got all of this in the formulation sheets for you. And you can see this thickening up nicely now. It's really important that we add the gum after the surfactants have been combined because the surfactants have a lot of water present. So if I add the xanthan gum to the water at the start, it will hydrate with the water at the start and I'll end up with a separated gummy layer. And that's obviously not desirable. A natural surfactant generally needs a relatively low pH, around 5 to 5.5, to be thick and perform well. So we'll just do a final check. And you can see how nice and thick that is without being too gluggy. Again, if you use a better quality grader xanth, then you won't even get any of that stringiness, but you can see it's a nice thick product. But now let's test it. I'm gonna add some citrus essential oil to this. Um, it's a pink grapefruit, and let's see how it handles that without being affected. Now that's the equivalent of 1.6% pink grapefruit oil. Citrus oils are notorious for affecting the viscosity of a surfactant product, but you will see this base is so robust, it is able to handle it. Again, on the day we manufacture, it's going to have some more foam in it. In a larger vat, this is not such a problem, but in our lab sample, you will see the foam today. Make sure you don't introduce air in a vortex, and this will become uh, a slightly more translucent product tomorrow. Again, with a better grade of xanthan gum, we would end up with a much clearer solution. You can see how viscous that is coming off the propeller blade. So what we have created is a nice, stable, viscous surfactant product that will foam and clean well and feels great too. And it can also handle a lot of extra materials that we add, whether it be citrus essential oils, beads, they'll all be stable in this base formula. Now I've provided you with the different options and ways you can mix up these base chassis. Uh, just some examples of the tests I've conducted on these base formulas, which you can get from us easily. Just give us an email. 
One of the things I wanna point out from this video, and I hope you've seen, in both cases, the way I treated the polymer was crucial. So in the synthetic surfactant, the way I processed that uh, Aqua SF1 was crucial. And in the natural product, the way I added the xanthan gum at the final stages was again crucial. If you don't do this right, you could end up with separated product, unstable product. It maybe won't stabilize the particles the way you were hoping. So that's how you create your fast formulations with surfactant products. Be careful of what you swap out in these formulas. The polymers I've picked are there because they do a lot to help with the stability of particles, of the surfactants. Remember that method is crucial. The surfactants I've selected also make formulating and ensuring good performance easy. So be careful of what you alter in these formulations, especially compared to how much variation you could do with the fast formulation emulsions that I provided you. Well, that's how we create our fast formulations for surfactants. Please give us a like if you enjoyed the content. Make sure you subscribe and leave comments below. Let me know what else you wanna see. And now it's your turn to get creative and turn those formulations around fast. Get to market within three months with good confidence of long-term stability. Happy formulating.